Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us today on the show floor of Sapphire. We are so excited to be here today with a, a panel of small business experts. My name is Carrie Maslin. I'm the Vice President of Small and Mid-Sized Enterprises globally for SAP. And I'm joined with uh, on the stage here with uh, Tom Gustafson of Rifle Paper Company and Brad Crimmin from WL Plastics. These are just two of our 240,000 SME customers that are running better with SAP. And I feel like who better to tell our story than two of our amazing growth customers. We call customers that are growing at a fast pace next generation customers. Why do we call them next generation? Because they look at technology in a really different way than other companies. They look at technology as a competitive enabler, as a way to let them compete with companies of any sizes, any place, anywhere, anytime. We also see that this next generation company looks at technology as an enabler um, to equalize or democratize their data in their company. So this means that anybody that has an I anything, I watch, I phone, I pad, can make decisions real time, any place, anywhere. Again, these are the type of companies that understand what an advantage this is to them to help them compete and grow. This kind of company also looks for their data to provide insights. They know that their data can tell them, for example, where to reroute the next piping order, which manufacturing plant has the capacity and the capability to make us have operational efficiencies and also to satisfy our customers, give them the best service ever. And of course, the next generation company wants all of this at a low cost, easy to consume, simple engagement. They want fast time to value. And again, we think that SAP, no surprise that we're here at Sapphire, can do this better than anybody else. We've got an award-winning portfolio. We've got 13,000 partners that support and sell to our customers. We've got over 80% of our customers are small businesses. Again, 240,000. And we have a 40-year rich history of serving these customers across any market unit, any region, any industry. But again, I think you probably heard enough from me. And as I like to say, just don't take my word for it. Let's hear from Tom and Brad. So thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. So Tom, let's start with you. Can you share with us what does Rifle do? Sure. Um, we are a stationary and uh, paper goods business that started in 2009 uh, and have been growing rapidly since then. We're actually based here in Winter Park, Florida. It's about 15 minutes here from, from here, so it's a quick drive for me. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we were be, uh, our, our founders are a husband and wife duo, and basically they started by doing custom wedding invitations for uh, their, we their wedding and then other individuals uh, a year after that. They kind of ventured into stationery, and over the last four years, we've grown globally uh, to become one of the fastest growing stationery brands in the, in the world, actually. Our family is a huge fan. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. I appreciate and that. Tell me about what is your role there? Sure. I'm the director of operations, so um, I oversee all of our different teams in terms of fulfillment, um, our operations team, our production team, accounts team, uh, and even some design. Great, yeah. thank you. And Brad, how about you? Can you tell us a little bit about WL Plastics and also your role? Absolutely. Uh, WL Plastics was founded in 1999. Uh, we are a pipe manufacturing company, uh, plastic pipe, uh, high density polyethylene. We have seven locations in the United States, one in, or six in the United States, one in Canada. Uh, we're headquartered in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we sell our product mostly into the oil and gas collection markets. Uh, the remainder of the business goes into uh, municipal water applications and private mining applications. Uh, my role at WO Plastics is as business analyst. Uh, I started on the, on the production floor as a quality technician, and I now oversee our SAP business by design and success factor systems. Great. So since we're here at Sapphire, we obviously want to know a lot about your technology journey. So Tom, can you take us through your decision process? How did you know you needed to change? Was there some compelling event, or was it a gradual sure. awareness? It's a great question. We, um, uh, for us, it was much more uh, of a gradual kind of realization, and we have only been around for about five years and have grown so rapidly that the things that we started with uh, in, in 2010, 09, we, we started with QuickBooks and uh, basically a bunch of disparate, disparate systems, a light speed point of sale system that we used for our inventory, a bunch of Excel spreadsheets that we had to manually enter. 
So we knew that based on our growth, we couldn't um, keep our, uh, we couldn't stay, stay up with all the data that was coming in. There was so much administrative work and then we even began to max out the licenses that we had for those different uh, softwares. So um, kind of as we, we got to the point where we, we literally could not get more people into those systems, um, we started to look at the next level uh, and that's how we came to SAP Business One after a long search. Uh, but uh, it's been terrific so far and it's uh, really enabled a lot of growth for us, specifically last year and we're still implementing a lot, but uh, there's a lot more to go for, and from our perspective. Great, and hold that search thought because we're going to come back to sure, that sure. one. So Brad, how about you? Was there a compelling event or was it more gradual for you as well? Uh, I would say for us it was also more of a gradual realization that we, that we needed to improve. Uh, like Rifle, we operated most of our business on Excel spreadsheets and QuickBooks as well. And we came to the realization that we were outgrowing both of those uh, applications and, and we needed something new. Uh, it, it evolved over a couple of years' time, I would say, that uh, you know, we started investi investigating ERP solutions and uh, came to this decision with Business by Design. Mm -hmm. That's great. So it's really similar stories, even though totally different businesses. So Tom, let's go back to that search. Sure. How did you come across, um, how did you go through your selection criteria? What were some of the vectors that you looked at and your decision criteria? Yeah, well, I think one of the primary things that we were looking to achieve was after coming through having a lot of disparate systems that didn't speak to each other, that essentially we had to call data from um, and that weren't live because by the time we got things punched into them, you know, we were trying to make the decisions on them and then nothing was ever kind of accurate. Um, we kind of, we knew that we wanted to find a solution that would be able to proactively help us with our business and be able to inform us about things that we're developing rather than having to sit and basically, you know, uh, reap data from it. Um, so one of the things we found really exciting about SAP Business One was that seemingly all the reporting that would be able to you kind of keep us live with all the things that are happening in production or shipping or inventory. So we, uh, that was kind of one of the things that really jumped out. This will sound pretty shallow, but uh, we're, we're a design-based organization, and, uh, and so we're pretty much all Mac-based. And I don't know if it means anything, but when we saw the SAP Business One skin and the way it looked, I know that sounds really kind of lame, but that was one thing that jumped out to us. That we, there were certain systems we looked at that we were like, we cannot have our people stare at this stuff all day. It's so bad. And so we really liked the way that it was laid out, it was designed, and um, I know that you know that was that was one thing that was there when we kind of uh, when we were sort of at that decision making process. So we don't think that's lame at all. Right. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> we put a lot of stock into yeah. the usability, the user interface, and the simplicity. Because if you don't like the system, you're not right. going to use it. Yeah. So yeah. We, we applaud that. And so, Brad, you took a slightly different path. You chose cloud. So how did you go about making your cloud decision to go with SAP? Well, the cloud decision really was a, an easy decision for us to make because you're looking at half of our IT department. So we don't have a whole lot of people to support an on-premise solution. Uh, we didn't have any infrastructure to support it as well. So cloud was always kind of the way we wanted to go. And uh, there weren't a whole lot of offerings uh, back when we were looking. And uh, our CFO, he comes from a long lineage of SAP you know, using companies. Uh, and when Business by Design came on our radar, it just seemed to fit. You know, We were comfortable. Uh, he was definitely comfortable with uh, SAP and knew what he was getting with SAP. And Business by Design just fit the mold. It was cloud, no infrastructure. Uh, no, no IT resources really needed to go forward. So that was, that was the decision process for us. So Brad, can you tell us a little bit about the after? So the before was a little bit painful, growth limiting. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the after? What are some of the key benefits that you've seen after the by design implementation? Sure. The, I mean, very first thing right off the bat was anybody who's used QuickBooks, you know it, it's not very good for multi-location. Uh, like Tom was mentioning, you have to pull data from several systems and, and aggregate it somewhere else. So the very first benefit that we realized was one set of master data, one reporting source, and it was always on in the cloud. We can get to it from wherever. Our, our executives that are traveling can log in from wherever they need to be to pull these reports and, and make those decisions. So that was number one. Uh, number two, uh, I mean, it's just... The standardized processes, the, the, I mean, the template format was great for us with Business by Design because we didn't have very good processes and, and we're still working on them today, but it gives us a platform to standardize, to 
you know, to bring some structure to our organization and, you know, and do it as we grow. We've, since we've implemented, we've brought on three more plants and it's been a non-issue, uh, you know, that scaling, that growth, uh, because that, the platform supported that structure and it was just as simple as turning on a new business unit. So could you finish this sentence if you could say SAP helps me run simple because is, is there a, a way you could describe how we help you run simple? Yeah, SAP helps us run simple because business by design is simple. It's, you know, it, it's very straightforward. Uh, like I mentioned before, we don't really need a lot of support from the IT side. We don't have to manage any infrastructure. Thank so goodness. So for us, it's very simple. Yeah. Yeah, because you're the IT, half the IT department. Half the IT, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And then, Tom, what about you? What would you, how would you describe the after? So we heard a, a little bit about how painful and challenging it was before. What are some of the benefits you've seen by going to SAP sure. Business One for the after? Absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, the, the, the kind of the basics of it, we were able to get um, not just um, department managers uh, access to data, but we were able to give you know, uh, the whole breadth of our team um, all the ability to get into inventory data, figure out where things are shipping, um, where is it in the production pipeline, you know, what, what sort of uh, um, uh, haste does it need to be created. You know, we feel like the one thing that has been really exciting is seeing everyone have the access to information um, that we didn't have prior to. Um, because then you had to go to someone and say, well, hey, well, you know, can you get me these inventory numbers on this thing? And now that, that's ac accessible to our entire team, which is definitely enabling us to work faster and, uh, and better, no doubt. And so how would you finish the sentence, SAP helps me or helps Rifle run simpler because? Yeah, I think it just it provides, uh, it provides data, it provides information at, at, the, at, people's, at our, all of our, our team members' fingertips. Uh, they're able to access it quickly. Um, it's the same data that we're all looking at. Uh, we're not looking at a bunch of different Excel sheets or a bunch of different things. It's kind of unified our team, um, and uh, that's been a, a massive advantage for us. So speaking about the team, I'm just wondering, because I'm hearing definitely from the two of you how beneficial, I'm just wondering about other people in the organization. How has the, the new software, whether it's Business One or by design, how are the other employees embracing the new technology? So Brad, maybe we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, it's for the most part, it's gone over very well within our organization. Uh, I mean, there's there's always a lot of resistance to change up front, uh, but I think that our our user base, our our uh, employees, they like it because it's a single source of truth wherever we go. Uh, we've got one set of of accounts, we've got one set of uh, product data, and you know, like we mentioned before, uh, you know, it's accessible anywhere. So we run a very lean operation. So when one of our you know, mid-level managers or one of our uh, key users is at home or needs to be away, they can still access it from wherever they need to be. So they, you know, they might not like that very much that they're always on call you know, and can get this stuff. But it is a benefit when you, know, when you run such a lean operation. So it's definitely been a, a good move for WL Plastics and, and our user base, our, our employees. And then, Tom, how about you? Are your employees excited excited that they can use this everywhere? Or what about your co-owners? Or, or yeah, absolutely. I mean, we. I mean, one thing is that it's we're still developing this, but one thing we're really excited to get into is uh, creating more of a dashboard for our ownership, so that they can see kind of where we sit. You know, and we've created reports and different reporting that make it really easy. But we feel like there's even more uh, to get to, and I think that's what's been exciting is we've been sort of unraveling business one over the past year figuring out more and more and I think that there's a general consensus amongst the team that it's almost like this Ferrari that we haven't, we were in second gear and we haven't quite used its full capability. Um, and I think a lot of the things that really um, kind of excited us in the beginning, we're, we're just now starting to, to get into and I think we've almost had this continued excitement um, as those things have sort of to come to life. Um, but in, you know, I think that one thing that was mentioned earlier that was really fantastic and true is that it does, you know, it forces you to, to uh, perfect your processes, and that's been really great. I think um, a lot of the ways, that, the way that we do business now, is shaped around the business one um, uh, kind of pipeline. You know, and our, our different departments now have um, different ways that they, they uh, operate based on the, the functions of the software. So it's actually kind of you know uh, poured into us in some in some ways and kind of shaping how we do things. So I think that that's been really helpful. So it's forced us to make those decisions. So it sounds like the title of this session is really apt for both of you. That really SAP has been able to help you, obviously, with a lot of work from you too, and commitment and passion, 
to actually cut out a lot of complexity and unleash growth. Would you yep. say that you both see growth potential now? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, there, we, the, we would not have been able to get through 2014 or where we are at this point this year without having that, that type of backbone you know, as a system. We just wouldn't have been possible. So uh, we're thrilled with yeah, what, it's, what it's provided thus far. Yeah, for us too. I mean, it's, we've been growing, and the way we would put it is the growth and the expansion has been seamless. It's been painless because, you know, the backbone is robust and we, we know what we've got. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, since we implemented, uh, we've, we've brought on three new business units, three new locations. And, I mean, it's a matter of a few hours to get everything ready rather than days or weeks and setting amazing. up a new instance. That's amazing. So we're also really thrilled and humbled and just so appreciative that you've both chosen to run your business with us and we love having customers who are partners like you too. If we wanted to give some advice to other customers or people who maybe don't know SAP is for me, what one piece of advice would you give to another smaller mid-sized business starting out on their technology journey? Tom, do you want to start with that one? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that when we started out, uh, the systems that we put in place, uh, we weren't necessarily considering the long-term ramifications of those because we didn't quite know where we were going, so to speak, or the growth, the type of growth that we would ha have had. Um, I think that it, it definitely, if you're going, if you are able to have the foresight at the beginning to start learning the way that it, that SAP, you know, kind of operates, it's great to get in as early as you possibly can. Um, to begin to kind of train yourself and your staff on how that, that goes. Because we learned a lot of bad habits working in QuickBooks and, and, and Excel spreadsheets that we've had to break over the last year. Um, but, you know, it's all been for the benefit of our, of our you know, team coming together and doing the best thing. So, so don't wait. Don't wait. Okay, yeah. great. Brad? Uh, yeah, I think the, the main thing that I would say is, uh, I mean, I hear this a lot from, from other companies. I've heard it a lot while I've been here, too, is, you know, people worry about the cloud. There's still a lot of questions about the cloud. And I guess our piece of advice would be, you know, don't really fear the, the cloud. Uh, we get asked all the time, you know, what about security? Uh, do you feel secure with your data in the cloud? And our response to that typically is, is yeah, SAP can do it better than we can do. Uh, again, not to float my own boat, but again, as half the IT department, I don't want to have to spend all that effort to try and secure things. And there's no way I can compete with the, you know, millions of dollars and maybe billions of dollars that SAP spends on securing their, their servers and their data. So, you know, don't fear the cloud. It's, it's been nothing but good for us. It's stable and it's responsive and, and we love it. Wonderful, thank you both so much and thank you for joining us. We've got space in the theater right next to us, so please join us there if you'd like to speak further with Tom and Brad. And once again, thank you so much, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.